hello everyone uh, welcome to this uh, session on uh, creation of awareness for hepatitis i am dr ravi kiran i am a consultant uh, hepatologist and uh, transplant physician at uh, narana health city bengaluru i have with me dr vinay both of us will try to explain and create uh, awareness among uh, the listeners about uh, the hepatitis in general welcome dr vinay thank you sir uh, Vinay, can you uh, tell us about this uh, World Hepatitis Day, when it is celebrated? What is the theme for uh, World Hepatitis Day 2024? Uh, World Hepatitis Day is actually an awareness uh, day for regarding the uh, problems like hepatitis, which is a common worldwide. It is celebrated on or actually uh, followed on, observed on 28th of July uh, this year in 2024. And uh, every year, the world, uh, the world Health Organization brings about the theme to act upon on this common problem. And this year, the World Health Organization has observed that the World Hepatitis Day, the main theme would be it's time for action because there are many, many multiple uh, instances where many people are not even aware and even if they are aware, they are not adequately treated. So in order to bring all those people into and uh, into the treatment purview so that we prevent the problems, this World Hepatitis Day is observed. So as you said, the theme for World Hepatitis Day 2024 will be celebrated or uh, is celebrated on July 28th. And theme for this year is it's time, for, time action. for action. So everyone has to be aware and take action regarding the world uh, regarding the hepatitis. Uh, Dr. Vinay, uh, how often you see patients with hepatitis coming to you? Uh, in your clinic, have you seen that the instance, uh, incidence of the hepatitis has increased? What is your uh, general take of, about this uh, hepatitis? See, hepatitis virus uh, is many multiple viruses which affects liver. There are different group of people or patients who are affected by this uh, uh, hepatitis infection. Certain viruses, which obviously we'll tell in, in the future uh, questions, where it only affects younger people and it usually gets transmitted through foodborne or waterborne way and some viruses are transmitted through blood. So we often see these kind of uh, different virus infection and usually the foodborne viruses or waterborne viruses usually get activated in this kind of season where it is rainy and uh, uh, easily the, this kind of foodborne infections are increasing. Second group of patients, as I said, it can be transmitted through blood or sexual contact. So those patients may not be aware and usually gets chronically affected and they come with later part of the disease in, in the future, uh, like they might present with chronic liver disease or cirrhosis, which is a bad uh, stage of liver disease. So you mean to say uh, this World Hepatitis Day majorly focuses on the hepatitis viruses causing the infection of the liver. Yes. Apart from that, uh, as we understand, the liver can be also be affected by fatty liver as we say and also by alcohol. But what many we do other, is many other causes. Many but other. what we will do is we will limit our discussion this time for only the hepatitis, hepatitis viruses, viruses itself so that the audience will have a more uh, informed uh, you know, uh, debate on the hepatitis viruses. So, Dr. Vinay, can you tell us what are the common viruses you see which can affect the liver? See, uh, usually uh, hepatitis virus are grouped into hepatotrophic or which exclusively attack liver and non-hepatotropic. Uh, we will uh, try to discuss first the hepatotropic virus because which is, which is most common. And usually it is named as hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C virus, hepatitis E virus and hepatitis D virus. So these are the five common uh, viruses which usually affect exclusively the liver and these needs to be addressed because these are the ones which can cause maximum damage to the liver. Okay, it's common for the listeners. Uh, it is very easy for the listeners to remember hepatitis A, a B, B, C, D, D E. I. Very good. So in among all these viruses, can you, uh, let's go stepwise or you can go uh, one virus at a time. Can you just tell us about uh, hepatitis A virus, how it is uh, how the patients get hepatitis A virus, how it is diagnosed and how it is treated and also about the prognosis. The small just if you have to say hepatitis A virus is a, uh, uh, is a virus which exclusively affects the liver and it is one of the virus which gets transmitted by food or water which is contaminated with the feces of the patient or the carrier who is carrying the virus and this gets transmitted once the patient or the person 
who is taking it into his system and this spreads to the liver and causes liver damage. Okay. Usually this group of patients, most of them may not have any symptoms or may be having vague symptoms like fever, body ache, malaise and some might have mild jaundice. But unfortunately, some patients, especially an older adult who is getting affected, might develop something called liver failure and may need urgent care or a higher uh, center care for treating those patients. So this is a common way how the hepatitis A virus uh, presents itself. Okay. And uh, what, what symptoms will the patient come to you to the your uh, clinic? As I said, most of them are asymptomatic, but some might develop a vague symptoms like fever, abdominal pain. Some might have nausea or decreased appetite, and some might have developed mild amount of jaundice, which they can get, uh, you know, can observe in their eyes, or when they routinely test, they might be having a positive jaundice in them. So when the patient comes, it's common scenario you would have encountered. Their patients are very concerned. They are worried that hepatitis A is positive. They will ask whether it will cause liver failure, whether they want transmutation in the future. So what is the advice you give to a patient who is already diagnosed with hepatitis A infection? See, treatment wise, there is no particular medicine or antiviral drug which is suitable to treat this kind of patient. Symptomatic Wait, management, hepatitis A infected hepatitis patient. virus. Okay. Particularly, we are okay. talking okay. about okay. hepatitis A. Okay. So they just need symptomatic treatment for the symptoms like nausea, vomiting, fever, body ache. And jaundice usually subsides once the virus effect goes down or wanes down. Ultimately, the jaundice will recover and the liver will regenerate. Unfortunately, only few patients, maybe less than a percent of patients who get affected by this virus might develop the worrying features of liver failure. What is liver failure? When there is synthetic function of liver getting hampered because of virus. This we have to keep on keenly observing in some patients especially those patients who are having an underlying existing liver disease like or a patient who is having a fatty liver or an advanced liver disease and he doesn't have symptoms they might have worsening of his liver function and might develop liver failure or any patient sometimes you know it could be just a unfortunate patient who may not have any liver disease but even them they can get affected but the chances are quite low and usually most of them recover well and they go back to normalcy and there will be no future problem or future uh, recurrence of infection and they usually do well in the later stage. Okay. So this was regarding hepatitis A virus infection. So similar to hepatitis A virus infection is hepatitis E virus yes. infection. Yes. So can you just uh, explain to our audience about hepatitis E virus and similarities between A and E? Uh, see, A and E is both are foodborne as well as waterborne uh, way of uh, transmission and it can affect any age group. In case of A, usually occurs in our childhood, especially in Indian subcontinent and most of us are immune for that. And sometimes if they are having at a later stage also, most of them will recover well. Similarly, hepatitis C also can affect the most uh, of the age groups and they usually have some vague symptoms similar to hepatitis A and very, uh, very rarely they can develop uh, acute liver like uh, liver failure like presentation. One unfortunate group of patients with whom we should be very keen is when a pregnant lady gets contact uh, contact with hepatitis E virus, that patient needs extra care because the worsening of liver function or liver failure chances are quite high and it can affect both mother and child or uh, the baby who is unborn uh, very badly and can, uh, can lead to a termination of pregnancy or abortion. So we should be careful in these group of patients. Similar to A and E, if they are affecting the patients who have already have some liver disease, the chances of liver failure is also high. Fortunately, hepatitis A virus has a good vaccine which can help us to prevent. Unfortunately, hepatitis E is not having any vaccine as such to prevent the disease. So these are the some of the similarities and uh, differences between the virus. But overall, they both are transmitted by contaminated food or water. So prevention is to uh, prevent those uh, contamination as well as taking in of that contaminated food into a uh, healthy individual that can prevent the disease per se. So as I understand from your uh, talk, uh, hepatitis A and E, uh, it is more dependent on the persons to prevent it. So they have to drink a sanitized clean water. Yes. Don't eat here and there on yes. the roadside. Yes. Be very yes. careful. 
and hepatitis A has a good vaccine which can uh, prevent the transmission. Unfortunately, hepatitis E does not have a vaccine. And even if the people get hepatitis A or E infection, there is no need to panic. Yes. Consult a doctor. He will uh, he will tell you what is the effect of hepatitis on your liver. And most of the times, uh, hepatitis A and E infection is limited on its own in the course of time. Yes. Thank you. That was good. So coming now to hepatitis B, can you just tell us about hepatitis B virus, how it is transmitted, how long it will take uh, to show effect on the people, the screening methods, the family screening, the vaccination available? First of all, uh, as we grouped A and E together, B and C is grouped together because the similarity in terms of Okay, what, you, what we do is you explain about both hepatitis B and hepatitis C together. After that, we'll speak anything specifically about yeah, other Some periods. differences yes. are there definitely yes. because yes. hepatitis B and C are usually, you know, one of the common viruses which causes chronic liver problems. You know, hepatitis B can uh, cause some uh, patients to develop cirrhosis as well as have liver cancer. Similarly, hepatitis C also can have uh, effect on liver chronically and cause liver damage chronically, causing something called cirrhosis of liver. And these patients are uh, in a high risk to develop liver cancer. So th this becomes important for us to prevent or to try to diagnose the patient early so that we prevent the disease progression and causing problems in the future. Coming to hepatitis B virus specifically, it's a DNA virus which affects the human liver and it also has an uh, uh, effect in terms of, uh, you know, it can also cause something like liver failure in an acute stage also in some patients or might worsen the existing liver disease problems. So this is one important aspect of hepatitis B virus. Usually the transmission in terms of A and E, we, uh, we told you that it transmits through food and water and any contaminated uh, so source. Hepatitis B usually gets transmitted when the patient or a person who is healthy comes into contact with blood or blood related products of an affected patient or through various other contacts like sexual contact with an affected patient or through needles, pricks from uh, infected needles. These are the common way the, how the viruses can transmit to a person. So this is about hepatitis B virus transmission. Now coming to the the problems or the symptoms which the patient might face. Many of the virus may not be aware or virus affected people may not be aware. According to you know various statistics, almost 90 million people are affected worldwide with hepatitis B virus. That's a lot, isn't it? Yes. Among them, one in four only are aware that they are having the disease, and among them, only 20% receive treatment who require treatment. So that is the burden which which the entire world is reeling down. Now, the so you mean to say there are a lot many people who are already infected, but they don't know that they are infected. Yes. Okay. And that says that you know many patients are asymptomatic. They may not be aware. They don't have symptoms. But if some patients develop symptoms, they might be having vague symptoms like you know tiredness, fatigue, difficulty in concentration, difficulty in doing routine activities, or decreased appetite or weight loss. So these are the common simple symptoms which, which they might be suffering but they may not be aware. Some unfortunate patients might progress to advanced liver disease problems like fibrosis or cirrhosis or liver cancer and then they might be aware or they might be diagnosed with hepatitis B. So in those cases the symptoms like jaundice, water in the tummy or swelling of feet or bleeding through mouth or through the vomitus can occur and they might present with such features in the advanced level. So this is about the symptoms of hepatitis B. Coming to treatment aspect, why we need to understand why... So, the, sorry, uh, sorry to cut you. So the similar symptoms will also occur with hepatitis, hepatitis C. C yes. The mode of transmission is almost the similar, same. Similar. So now you can elaborate about the treatments what we have for B and C. See why the entire picture of awareness is required is that you know these two viruses have a potential to cause a chronic liver problems so we have to understand that first of all preventing the occurrence or transmission is the key important thing so that the virus is not transmitted to a new person this can be done by for hepatitis b we have a very good vaccine which in a course of three vaccine they get 
uh, almost a good immunity protection. to protect, protect themselves. Unfortunately, hepatitis C doesn't have a virus vaccine. The treatment aspect or awareness that there is an existing treatment which can treat both hepatitis B as well as hepatitis C infection is very important because many, as I told, only 20% who are aware they are getting treated, although they require treatment. It's because they, they think that you know it is untreatable, uncurable disease and it is not possible to control the infection or the progression. This is a myth and this requires to be busted because these two viruses have a very good medicine which can stop the transmission or in a sense the progression of the liver disease and many patients who are in advanced liver problems can sometimes revert back yes. to a, a you know no normalcy or near normalcy so that they can lead a happy good life. So what you mean to say is even if the patient have but it is be with the, some sort of liver disease they should not be sitting idle and at home and not be depressed please consult a doctor so that the get, there are very good medicines which yeah. can prevent the progression or in some cases they can even reverse the disease process also that's yeah. good hepatitis b one more uh, point is that you know not every patient who is affected or hbsag positive will require treatment that needs to be assessed through various tests whether they are a candidate for treatment and some may not require treatment and they may just need to be followed up observed for the progression of the disease and subsequently taken call for treating them so that is the uh, one aspect which hepatitis b is a little different so this is a very good point what dr vinay has uh, come up with so when we say that patient is having hepatitis b and we tell them that there is no treatment required at that point of time the patient just ignores the advice and they don't come for follow-up so at this point of time i would want to reiterate that when we say that there is no treatment required but it doesn't mean that follow-up is not required whenever there is a diagnosis of asymptomatic hepatitis b infection please be informed that you need to follow up with the doctor regularly okay it may be every six months or a year mm -hmm. or in two years but make sure that you follow up with the doctor yeah so this was the awareness and it's this is the point of theme that mm -hmm. it's time for action because Many people know, but they may not be, you know, on a regular follow-up or they think that, you know, treatment has side effects we don't want to take. Because that can get transmitted and especially in a country like India where the, the disease burden is slightly higher. We have a female population or a younger, a younger population who are affected, but they may not be aware and they can transmit to the future generation in the while uh, the delivery or uh, birth of the baby. So, Awareness, treating them or preventing by vaccination and protection forms an important component of our action towards, uh, you know, uh, progression of this uh, wildfire. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, patient listening.